East of the sun and west of the moon. It's pretty straightforward, but poetic, much like a storybook. No, we baby too. For it's you. I'm a storyteller. That's what I truly love is to tell stories. You East of the sun and west of the moon. The original concept for the album was, you know, me being able to create something that represents exactly who I am right now. You know, after playing solo shows and, you know, working mostly solo for the past few years, like, being in this group environment is, like, a completely new universe. Working with the Womax is just, it's incredible. I mean, it's been one of the best experiences of my life so far. So basically, Noah's a badass. Like, <laughs> he's been uh, playing the part of executive producer on this project, and he's just so good at it, you know? Like, he's got a great ear, and he's brought so many cool concepts to the table, and it's, it's really awesome to see him working on all this stuff, because he really digs into it and just spends hours and hours upon hours at a time just making sure things are top-notch. Just kind of trying to keep a total vision of the song as it goes along and trying not to get sucked in too much into parts or individual little nuances like that and just trying to get the whole image together of it and kind of trying to take it in a different direction than Emily's gone before. I think what I'm most proud of is how true these songs have stayed to their to their origins because you know the group energy has transformed them in a way, and they're completely different than anything I would have ever expected, but every time I listen to them, it just takes me back to that moment when I wrote them. The Captain is a song I wrote for Robin Williams. I was feeling very emotional about it, and I always write the best when I'm emotional, so I sat down with my guitar to write it, and it just, it just kind of happened. It was one of those songs where it's done in like 20 minutes and you've got it. So I based it off of his role in Dead Poet Society, you know, in just reference to the poem that they repeated so often, oh captain, my captain. I think when any musician meets a younger musician, um, you know, there's that feeling of inspiration. You know, you're, you're excited for them because you see them walking the path that you walked, you know, whether, you know, they're, they're a few years younger than you or 10 years younger. Uh, you can always kind of remember where you were when they, when, you know, when you were that age. She's just a great soul and doesn't matter her age. You know, everybody always wants to talk about the fact that she's 16, and I'm kind of waiting for people to just take her seriously, so seriously that, like, they forget, you know, that it's not even, like, talked about anymore, I guess, that she's 16. Because to me, like, she hits harder on so many, like, levels as far as just, like, emotionally and, like, her songwriting itself it's really timeless and ageless. She's wise beyond her years, and I'm always surprised at her maturity. She just writes these amazing songs. One of my uh, favorite tracks on the record is Let It Shine. Yeah, the Let It Shine song. 
You know, at first we were gonna do something really generic with it. When I go into making a bunch of things, I try to make sure that some of them are similar and some of them are not similar, if that makes any sense. But then all of a sudden, C. Webb walks in and he sits down at, uh, at the kit and he starts playing along with the track. So I was already doing a bunch of the, I don't know, I guess they're like country shuffles or those type, you know, the Americana shuffle. I just started hitting three things at once and started playing some toms. I did this thing with the toms that was all like... It was basically just leaving more space for things to go on. A more creative canvas for people to paint on, I guess you would say. Because of that moment, I think uh, it just it just gave everybody permission to get creative with it, and yeah, that's where that's where it started. As soon as Emily asked the Womax to be a part of this, um, somewhere inside of me, I, I knew this was going to be a bigger project than just Emily Keener and the, and the Womax. Save me a spot on the train till I get there. I'll let you sit by. To be fair, I have been waiting a very long time to so save me a spot on the train. Um, and and it's and it's gone bigger than that, you know. To you know, Tommy Christian playing the violin, uh, Corey Boomer adding some extra percussion, um, and the tremendous help of Dalton Brand and Waveburner Recording Studios. I mean, it's, it's felt like a community project, and, and we feel the mojo in that. You can tell in these tracks that it's not just one brain. It's not just two. It's not just us and, and, and Keener, you know, Womax and Keener. It's not five brains. It's, it's six, seven, eight brains that, that really gives it, gives it that sense of community and, and excitement in the tracks, you know? think of this project as that you know a way for us to just say hey we're here you know in the middle of nowhere Ohio here we are and uh, we're doing some pretty awesome stuff and working with what we have and I think it has the power to move people I think she has the power to move people you know she does she's got it I feel like uh, 2015 will be a year of community and a lot of learning on my part. That's my goal. I want to learn as much as possible. And, you know, obviously songwriting is always my, my, my top priority, but um, I've come to realize how important community is in this, uh, in this world of music. It's an amazing thing how people come together around things like this because they love it or love the person behind it and you know they they're really eager to show their support one of my favorite parts of recording the record um not only was just the openness of, of to change um but it was the the sense of adventure when we were experimenting with these tunes um the song before i met you for example uh was a waltz tune it was in a major key um, it had these longing lyrics to it, um, but you know we kept and, and eventually one of the lyrics is in Italian. So we kind of wanted to go with this cafe feel. I tried laying down an accordion to it, a mandolin, and and all these different instruments that we just couldn't get it to work. We couldn't get it to feel right, um, and so we went in to try to do a major overhaul. It's like well, let's change the chords. Let's let's change the bed of the song. You know what the lyrics are flowing over top of, and so we changed it to a minor chord. Well, I'll show you. Um, so if she's singing out of the major key, you're going to hear That's a very happy, sort of sprightly feel to it. But then we replace those with the relative minor chords, um, and it ends up sounding like this. You can keep the same melody, but change the chords to something more ghostly. Um, How did I live before you changed?
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let it shine on me. And show your love. This is the day that the Lord.